Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you guys are new here, my name is Erin. Welcome, I love to do all things crochet, knitting, fiber, art related. But anyways, let's go ahead and just jump into today's video. I'm really excited for this one because I'm actually going to be crocheting a polo t-shirt for Jordan. So I just wanted to really quickly go over the materials that you'll be needing. So first and foremost, the yarn that I'm going to be using for today's tutorial is actually this Rico Design Fashion Light and Long Tweed Yarn. This is gonna be a really gorgeous yarn to use for this polo t-shirt because this is actually a chain net construction yarn as well as it has a really interesting mixture of cotton acrylic polyamide and viscose so you want to choose something that's going to be a very lightweight breathable so at the moment I actually have about seven six or seven balls and I'm hoping I don't have to use all of it and on top of that I will also be using my handy dandy 5.5 millimeter crochet hook because although this suggests I believe a four millimeter crochet hook because I'm going to be using a very interesting stitch I do need to size up my hook a good amount and again with a larger hook I'm going to get a little bit larger of a stitch a little bit more airflow and the last thing that I wanted to recommend for this tutorial is to grab a t-shirt hopefully a polo just something that fits you really really nice kind of hugs you almost a little bit but I'm choosing to use Jordan's men's medium polo t-shirt just as a reference guide as I'm crocheting this so I am going to make sure that I'm using this t-shirt as a guide just to ensure that it's going to fit him just right so the process that I'm going to take in order to create this men's crochet polo t-shirt is I'm going to crochet a front panel a back panel and once I stitch the whole thing together I'm going to go in and crochet in the round for both of my sleeves and of course for the last finishing touch I am going to add a very cute little collar to the front of the t-shirt let's just go ahead and jump on into it in order to make this crochet pillow I'm actually going to start off by crocheting the front panel so I'm going to insert my 5.5 millimeter crochet hook I'm going to start off by creating a chain that is the width of the t-shirt that I want so for this men's medium crochet polo I'm going to create a chain that is about 19 inches long and for the pattern that I'm going to use it doesn't matter the number of stitches it can be either even numbered or odd numbered I've gone ahead and crocheted a chain that is 64 stitches and again this is for a men's size medium and here for row one I'm actually going to chain one extra this one is for turning and I will be using half double crochets for this entire pattern so to begin working on row one I'm going to yarn over skip the first chain in my row and insert my hook into the second chain insert pull up a loop and with three on, yarn over and pull through all three. And this is your half double crochet stitch. So again, yarn over, finding the next stitch, insert, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through all three. So I'm just gonna repeat this half double crochet for the entire chain and I'll meet you back to show you how to work on row two. And now here at the end of row one, I can chain one and turn my work. So to begin crocheting row two, this is where I'm gonna to start to implement the half double crochet waistcoat stitch. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove my hook to show you specifically how to work this stitch. So as you can see right here is my very first half double crochet in the row. Normally we would be picking up the two top loops to create a normal half double crochet. But like I said, I will be using the half double crochet waistcoat stitch. So what you want to do is look for the very base of your half double crochet. And hopefully you guys are able to see that there is a left leg and a right leg to your stitch. And how I'm going to be inserting to create this waistcoat stitch is I'm going to pierce right through the middle of both of those legs. So again, find the left leg and the right leg to the base of your stitch. And you're gonna to wanna to poke your hook through the very center in between both of those legs. And again, you're just gonna go ahead and finish out the half double crochet like normal. So I'm just gonna go ahead and find another little random stitch right here just to showcase to you how to enter into this stitch. Again, looking right here, as you guys can hopefully see, there is a left leg to your stitch 
and a right leg. And what I'm gonna do is insert my hook right in between both of those legs and pierce through the other side. And again, once you pierce through the base of your stitch, you're gonna go ahead and finish out that half double crochet like normal. So now that you guys see the basis on how to create the waistcoat stitch, I'm gonna go ahead and work the very first row, placing one half double crochet waistcoat stitch into every single stitch. So again, to go ahead and start on row two, I have already chained my one for the very start of my row. I'm going to yarn over, and find the very center of my stitch in between the left and the right leg. And I'm just gonna use the tip of my hook to kind of wiggle and pierce through the very center. And when you poke out the other side, go ahead, yarn over, and pull up a loop. And now that you have three on, finish out your half double crochet like normal. So there is my very first waistcoat stitch. Again, I'm going to yarn over, look here for my next stitch, find my left leg and my right leg, and insert my hook right through the middle, and then just go ahead and finish out your half double crochet like normal. I will note that this second row is the toughest row to create the waistcoat stitch, but once you move on to your third, fourth, and so on with your rows, it becomes a lot easier to find the base of your stitch. Let's go ahead and work one more together. Again, I'm going to yarn over, and look here for my very next stitch. I have a left leg and a right leg, and I'm just going to use the very tip of my hook to wiggle through the very center, poke out the back, and finish out your half double crochet. So this is what row two should look like. I'm gonna go ahead and finish up row two again with my half double crochet waistcoat stitches and I'll meet you back here for row three and so on. Here at the end of row two, again, I'm just going to chain one and turn my work so I can go ahead and show you guys how to work row three. Now again, I'm gonna be using those half double crochet waistcoat stitches for this entire pattern, but now that I have a few rows worked up, it becomes a lot easier to see the stitch in its full entirety. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna pull up my little darning needle here for showcasing purposes again. But again, looking here at my very first stitch in the row, I wanna place that waistcoat stitch. So I'm going to find the left leg and the right leg. And of course, you're gonna to wanna to pierce through the very center of that stitch. But now on the opposite side of your work, when you turn your work around, hopefully you guys are able to see that I am piercing through the left and the right leg on the back side of my work. So this pattern is completely reversible, but just make sure that when you're piercing through the back, you wanna make sure that you're also piercing through the center of the stitch on the back side. Sometimes the yarn can kind of get twisted around and you can accidentally pick up the side of the stitch like that. So again, find the very center between the two legs, pierce through your work, and always flip your work around to double check that you have inserted through the left and the right leg on the back side as well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and finish up row three, but again, we're just working with those same exact stitches. So again, I've yarned over, find the left and the right leg, and insert your hook right through the center of the stitch. I'm going to turn my work around, but as you guys can see, the left and right leg on the back side of my work have completely split in half, which is exactly what I want. So go ahead, finish out your half double crochet like normal. Again, I'll show you a few more stitches in depth. Looking here for my next stitch, I have a left leg and a right leg. I'm going to insert right through the center of that stitch and turn your work around. And as you guys can see, I did not split that stitch correctly. So what I'm gonna do is pull my hook back out. And again, find the very center of that stitch, wiggle my needle through, flip my work around. And now as you guys can see, I have the left leg and the right leg wrapped around my needle or my hook. So from here, finish out your half double crochets. So this is what I mean by really take your time, take these stitches slow, 
flip your work around to just make sure, and as you guys can see, I have the little V here on the back side. Left and right leg are split perfectly. So I can go ahead and finish out my stitch. And again, I'm just gonna be repeating this half double crochet waistcoat stitch for the entire row, placing one stitch into the top of each stitch. So this is the current side of the work that I'm currently working on. And if I flip my work around, you can also see that all of my V's are placed correctly on the back side as well. So I'm just gonna finish up row three and four and five and so on. And I will meet you back when this panel is long enough and large enough. So now that we're here at the end of row three, what I'm going to be doing for the remainder of this top is just simply adding rows. Again, you don't need to add any increases, any decreases, just place one stitch on top of every waistcoat stitch prior and add as many rows as you would like. Keep in mind that eventually I am going to want to add a little bit of a V-neck to this top. So go ahead and measure out how long you would like this shirt to be. And again, I'm just gonna add a ton, a ton of rows until I reach about the center of the chest area. All right, so I'm back and as you guys can see, I have pretty much worked up the basis for the body of the front panel. So currently at this moment, I know I can't fit the entire shirt on screen, but from very bottom to the top of what I have right now, I have exactly 17 inches. And in case you guys are wondering, I have worked a total of 84 rows of these half double crochet waistcoat stitches. So again, I have 84 rows completed and now it's time to start working on our little v-neck polo center right here so to go ahead and start working on our v-neck section i have gone ahead and marked off four stitches in the very center of the polo that we're going to leave untouched at the moment. So go ahead and count out the correct amount of stitches. And then again, right here at the very center, I have one, two, three, and four stitches left untouched at the center. So go ahead and place your stitch markers corresponding to the right and the left stitch of your center. So at this point, I can go ahead and start working the rest of the body. Again, I'm gonna have the left side of the top and the right side. So picking up from where I've left off here at the end of my 84th row, I'm just gonna go ahead and reinsert my hook here turn my work. I'm just going to go ahead and continue on with that half double crochet waistcoat stitch and place one stitch into each stitch, finishing off here at my stitch marker. So again, I'm chaining one and turning my work and starting off with the right shoulder. I'm just going to continue on with that regular half double crochet waistcoat stitch. So for this first row of the shoulder, again, just make sure that you're working one stitch like normally and finish off your very last stitch into the stitch with the stitch marker or the place marker. So you're pretty much just continuing on with the same exact pattern and I'll meet you at the end of row one. All right, so I've just come up here to the end of row one of our shoulder section. And as you can see, I have placed that last stitch right into the center of my stitch marker stitch. So again, here at the end of row one, I'm just going to chain one and turn my work. And now for row two, go ahead and repeat that same half double crochet waistcoat stitch back along this shoulder edge. So again, I'm just gonna be inserting through the center or the two legs of the stitch. Go ahead, pick it up and work your way down. And again, keep in mind, I'm just going to be repeating this shoulder pattern here for about five inches or so, and then I'll come back and show you guys my progress. All right, so I have just finished working up this shoulder section of the top. And as you guys can see, I've literally just been working straight up, no decreases, just placing one stitch into each stitch. And I have worked a total of 16 rows. So again, if you guys are making this a different body size just for measurements, so at this point, now that I have my four inches completed, I can go ahead and start working on a few rows of decreases here only on the inner 
or inside portion of the neckline. So what I'm going to do for this very top of the shoulder section is again, place one waistcoat stitch into each stitch. And then when I have two stitches remaining here at the end of my row, again, only on the inner portion, I will work one half double crochet decrease. Again, I'm just going to be placing one regular half double crochet waistcoat stitch into each stitch until I have two stitches remaining. And that is where I'm going to be working at that decrease. And keep in mind guys, that decrease is only happening on the inner portion of our shirt. So whenever you start a row on the outer portion of your shirt, work it like normal. But here we go, just working that one stitch across. And now that I'm coming up here on the inner portion of the neckline, I have two waistcoat stitches remaining. So what I'm going to do again is work a half double crochet, but again, pick it up as if it's a waistcoat stitch. So I'm gonna insert and pull up a loop. And now that I have three on, yarn over, and again, go ahead and pick up that very last stitch in the row. Pull up a loop and with five on, yarn over and pull through all. So this is our half double crochet waistcoat decrease. It looks a little bit funky, but again, once we go back in and add like a little bit of ribbing or inner work right here on the neckline, it will be virtually invisible. So let's go ahead, chain one and turn our work. And now for row two of the very top of this neckline portion, again, I'm going to yarn over and because I'm beginning on the inner portion of my shirt, I'm gonna go ahead and work that decrease at the start of my row. So go ahead and pick up that very first waistcoat stitch. It's a little bit hard. And now that we've gone ahead and picked up that first stitch, again, yarn over and find the next stitch in the row. Pick it up, yarn over, and pull through all five. So that is another decrease here at the very start of the row. And of course, go ahead and finish out the rest of your row with just one waistcoat half double crochet for the entire row. So I'm only gonna be working these decrease rows for I think about six or so. I'm just gonna go ahead and measure that when I'm done and let you guys know how it works out. But we just need a few rows of decrease at the very top of our shoulder, just to allow for our neck hole. We wanna be able to fit our head through nice and easy. So I've just gone ahead and finished up my few rows here with the decreases only on the inner portion of the neckline. So I have a total of six rows here on this edge with the decreases, again, following my straight edge. So I'm just gonna go ahead and zoom out to show you guys what this looks like at the moment. But again, here is like the very center of the neckline where I left those stitches unmarked. I've worked straight up here on my panel. And like I said, I have six rows of decreases is again only on the inner portion of the neckline so the outer side of your top should still remain completely straight. I've gone ahead and worked up the other shoulder on the other side of the panel. And this is what my front panel is looking like. Again, in order to make the other side of the shoulder section, just go ahead and attach your yarn at the far corner where we've left off right over here and just follow those same steps. Again, mimic the same amount of rows and right here for the last six rows, go ahead and work those decreases. So your front panel should look very symmetrical here across the middle, but from the very bottom of my panel up to the very top, I have 22 inches. And now we can go ahead and move on to the back panel. So I've spent the last three or so days here working up my entire back panel. And again, I want this to match the same length as our front panel. So including all of our basic body rows, the neckline rows, and our shoulder decrease sections here, I have a total of 104 rows. I've just gone ahead and repeated those same exact chain count from the very beginning. Again, I'm just working 104 rows with these half double crochet waistcoat stitches. And here is the back panel. So now that the back side matches the same length here as the front side of our panel, I can actually go ahead and start moving on to joining this top here at the shoulder sections. So if you guys would like to leave an extremely long tail, and we're just going to use these tails to whip stitch or mattress stitch here along the very top side of our work.
All right, so now at this point that I have my shoulder seams all connected, I can go ahead and start working on connecting the side portions of our panels. So what I've done here is I've actually marked out about eight and a half inches. Again, the armhole preference is completely up to you. And right here, I actually have eight and a half inches. So what I've done is used a little place marker to pierce through on both panels. That way I'm just keeping them together and they don't get all wonky on me as I'm stitching them up. So now at this point that I have the eight and a half to nine inches marked off for our armholes, what I am going to do is attach a new yarn here at these two corners of the panel. And again, just slip stitch or whip stitch your way all the way up both of these panels and go ahead and stop right here at your place marker. So I'm just gonna be picking up the smallest amount of the stitch here on both edges. And again, just whip stitch all the way up your side and make sure that you're stopping at your place marker. That way there is still room for the armholes. So now that I have the side of my panel completely sewn together, leaving behind the armhole, I can officially start working in the round here for my sleeves. So what I'm gonna do in order to start working on the sleeves here is grab my yarn, tie off a knot and attach it here at the very bottom of our armpit section. Now I can go ahead and pull up a loop and chain one. And from this point, I'm just going to be spacing out my stitches as evenly as possible. But again, I'm gonna be working with these half double crochets. So again, I'm going to yarn over, pick up my first stitch, and start placing half double crochets all across this sleeve section. So there is my first one. Again, just moving on down the armhole and try your best to space out your half double crochets as best as possible. And my little method here on placing stitches across this armhole section is I'm pretty much skipping every other row because again, I don't want my stitches to be placed too close together. So I'm just going to skip a regular row right here and pick up the next. And again, skip this row and move on to your next. But again, this is just the method that I prefer. If you guys would like to place more stitches, again, it's completely up to you. But this is what my armhole is looking like for the first row. All right, so I've just gone ahead and slip stitched into that chain one space at the very start of our row. And again, this is what my sleeve is looking like. So again, from this point, we're just gonna be working outwards, creating the sleeve. And again, for this men's medium sized t-shirt, I have actually placed a total of 60 half double crochet. So I have 30 half double crochet on the front side and 30 on the back. So at this point, now that I've slip stitched, I can go ahead and turn my work and begin working on row two. Again, just like the rest of this pattern, I'm gonna keep with the half double crochet waistcoat stitch. And the only trick with this is when I come up to the very top stitch here where I have joined my two panels together, I will work one half double crochet decrease because I do want the sleeves to be a little bit more fitted instead of boxy. So again, I'm just gonna be placing one half double crochet waistcoat stitch into the top of every stitch until I reach the very top of the polo. And for the entirety of the sleeve section, I will be working in the round. So every time you come up onto your last stitch and you slip stitch into the top of your chain one space, go ahead and turn your work around. Again, by turning our work at the end of each row, we are ensuring that the seam underneath our armpit is going to be straight instead of curving out slightly. And now that I'm coming up here to the very top of my shoulder section, I'm gonna go ahead and just work one half double crochet decrease. So again, I'm gonna pick up that stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, and go ahead and pick up the next stitch and do your best to keep with that waistcoat stitch just so that the pattern stays in theme. 
just go ahead and pull through all of your stitches. So again, I am just working one decrease at the very top of my sleeve, but when it comes here to the bottom, just work the same amount of stitches. So we should only be decreasing once at the very top of the shoulder. But again, now for the rest of this pattern, go ahead and work one stitch into each stitch. Finishing up row two right here. Again, I'm gonna slip stitch into the top of that chain one space from the start of our row, just to go ahead and close it up. And now here for row three, again, chain one like always and turn your work. And now here for row three, I'm just going to be repeating the same steps from row two. And I'm actually going to be repeating this row over and over for quite a bit, because again, I want the top of the shoulder section to kind of narrow up and have a little bit more of a taper. So again, for row three, after my chain one space, go right back into your first stitch and continue to work those half double crochet waistcoat stitches. And again, I'm just going to be working one half double crochet into every stitch until I reach the very top of my shoulder section where I'm gonna go ahead and work one decrease stitch. And then again, for the rest of the sleeve, go back to working one stitch into each half double crochet. And really quickly here, I just wanted to show you that decrease stitch at the very top of our shoulder section. Again, here is the very top. I'm just gonna go ahead and pick up that decrease stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over and insert into the next stitch, pull up another loop, and now yarn over and pull through all of your loops. So now I have another decrease stitch right there and I can continue working the rest of the row like normal. All right, so I've just finished up working most of my sleeve section. It's not very long, but again, with those decreases only here at the very top of the shoulder, it does have a little bit more of this fitted shape. So at this point, I have worked a total of 15 rows with the sleeve. And for some quick measurements, I have exactly three inches here from the edge of my top. So now at this point that I finished off here with my 15th row, I'm just gonna go ahead and go back in and add a few rows of slip stitches in the round just to add a little bit of like a ribbing if you will or at the edge to the sleeve so to go ahead and pick up where I have left off again here this is going to be my 16th row on the sleeve I'm just going to go ahead and chain one and turn my work and now here for row 16 or the cuff section of the sleeve, I'm just going to be working with front loop only slip stitches so I'm only picking up that front loop on the top two loops, picking it up onto my hook and creating a slip stitch. So at this point, I'm just gonna go ahead and add as many rows as I would like to my cuff. Again, this is completely up to you, but I just want a very small dainty cuff. So make sure that you're only picking up the front loop as opposed to both two top loops and finish out your slip stitch. All right, so at this point, I have gone ahead and finished up a total of seven rows with those front loop only slip stitches. And this is what the little cuff looks like. So at this point, you guys can go ahead and start working on the other sleeve. Again, you're gonna wanna work 15 rows if you're following this pattern with decreases only here at the top shoulder section. And then after those 15 rows, go ahead and add another seven rows with the ribbing to complete your sleeves. But at this point for tutorial, purposes I'm just going to go ahead and move on here to the neckline where I'm going to add a slight bit of ribbing here to the neckline and then go in and finish this off with a polo or collar type of feature so I'm going to go ahead and attach my yarn right here to the corner of our neckline and begin working back and forth up along this side of the collar and work my way down. What I'm going to do for this collar section is actually work single crochets back and forth and make sure that I'm always slip stitching into the side of our shirt. And as I'm working these rows, I'm gonna make sure that I pick up the front loop only on every single crochet, slip stitch into my row, turn back and again, pick up the front loop only on my slip stitches, chain one, turn back, and just again, work rows of single crochets through the front front loop only.
All right, so I've pretty much finished up the entire collar section here for the neckline. And as you guys can see here, right here at the very bottom for the last row of this neckline, I have gone ahead and tied off a knot and left a super long tail because how I'm gonna go about attaching this is I'm gonna flip my shirt inside out and I want to place these last four stitches right here on the inside of these four stitches right here. So I'm gonna use a darning needle and make sure that again, on the inside of your shirt, pick up and slip stitch these four stitches along the same four stitches right here. So at this point, we are almost completed with our neckline. The very last step is to add a little collar pillow effect right here. So what I'm going to do is measure about four inches up from the very center of our chest area, and I'm going to attach my yarn right here to this new collar. So what I'm gonna do once I attach my new yarn is place a row of single crochets evenly across the neckline until I meet back to the corresponding spot right here. So now we're just going to be working across the very top of the neckline back and forth and when I come up to the ends of my rows on every other row I'm going to add an increase on both corners but again I'm just going to be doing that on every other row because I do want this polo area to kind of angle down like that and I think for the last finishing touches of this polo collar area I'm going to switch up to my 5.0 millimeter crochet hook just because I want these stitches to be a little bit tighter than what I have right here so go ahead size down your hook one step and begin placing those single crochets. So now here at the end of row one, I can go ahead, chain one and turn my work. And as I'm working it back across row two, I am going to place a single crochet increase into the first stitch and into my very last stitch in the row. But other than that, just work one single crochet across your entire row. And again, place your increases in the very last and the very first stitch. I'm coming up here to the end of my row two and here again with my last and final stitch, I'm gonna go ahead and place two single crochet all into that same stitch. So now here for row three, go ahead, chain one and turn your work. And for row three, I'm just going to be placing one single crochet into the top of each stitch. So we're pretty much just repeating steps from row one. And again, when it comes to row four, I'm gonna go ahead and repeat these same steps from row two, where I have my increases on both corners. So you're gonna be increasing on every other row. But again, like I said, here for row three, I am just going to be placing one single crochet into the top of each stitch. All right, so now at this point that I have both of my sleeves crocheted and completed, and I also have my really cute little polo neckline here, the last little thing that I wanted to work on with this shirt is I'm gonna head over here to the very bottom, and I'm just gonna go ahead and attach my yarn to one of the corners and just begin working in the round here to add a slight bit of ribbing to the very bottom of our shirt. So what I'm gonna do is pretty much follow the same steps that I used here for the cuffs of the sleeve 
sleeve. Again, I'm just gonna go ahead and attach my yarn right here, and I'm going to work with front loop only slip stitches for the entire round. And once I slip stitch to my chain one, turn my work around and continue to work with those front loop only slip stitches until I have a nice cuff that's probably about an inch and a half. But again, we're just following those same steps that we use for the cuff of the sleeve and applying them to the very bottom of our top. So again, work as many rows as you would prefer. I'm just gonna go ahead, attach my yarn at the corner and begin slip stitching. So at this point, I've just gone ahead and finished up the last few rows of the bottom ribbing, and I think that it looks super gorgeous. I love how this like slip stitch technique looks, and I ended up doing a total of 10 rows of these slip stitches. So this is what the bottom of the shirt looks like. And at this point, our top is all completed. All that's left to do now is to go back in by hand and hand weave in all of our ends using our darning needle. So just go ahead, weave your ends in, hide those bad boys in your shirt, and your polo is done.